Today we'll be looking at uniform circular motion. We know that circular motion is a type of motion. In one of our classes, we treated motion as a topic. And we said that motion can take place if and only if a force is applied. It means the change in position of an object or a particle from one point to another when a force is applied. But in this case, uniform or circular motion rather is a type of motion. And circular motion can take place if a body or a particle moves in a circular path through an axis. Through an axis. So let's look at this. But before we proceed, when we discuss motion on a straight line, we defined some parameters like displacement as the distance moved in a specified direction. We talk about speed as the rate of change of distance. We talk about velocity as the rate of change of displacement. We talk about acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. So when we're talking about circular motion, we also mention these parameters. But emphasis will be towards an angle. We can talk about angular displacement. We can talk about angular speed, angular velocity, and so on. So let's look at this sketch here. This is a scenario where a circular motion is being performed. And this is supposed to be the axis where this circular motion will take place. We know what is the radius and B is assumed to be the starting point of this motion. So at this point, we have V1. That's what we call the tangential velocity. The velocity at that particular point on the circumference of the circle. This is V2. Assuming this body moves from point B to point C, it will have, at that particular point, we also have what we call a tangential velocity V2. So the change, the difference between these two points is what we call a change in velocity, which will be V2 minus V1. So the centripetal acceleration. You know, for a body to perform circular motion, the speed has to be constant. But moreover, the direction is being continually changed. So we can talk about uh, uniform or constant speeds and the acceleration is now geared towards the center of the circle. That is the condition where we can experience a circular motion. So looking at this, the magnitude of that centripetal acceleration is given as V squared all over R. Where this V is what we call the tangential velocity. And R is the radius. And we know that there's a relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity as V equal to omega r. So if you now take this value and substitute into this equation, we can have a c equal to omega r all squared all over r where we can have AC equal to omega square R all over 
R square all over R. Where one of the R will take care of this and we'll have EC equal to omega square R. This is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration when angular velocity is involved. This is the magnitude of centripetal acceleration when tangential velocity is involved. So we have a problem here. A mass of 70 kg is making eight revolutions per second. Eight revolutions per second. Round the circle of radius 14 meters. Find the force towards the center of the circle, which must be acting upon the mass. Looking at this, looking at this, we can approach this problem like this. We are asked to calculate the force from Newton's second law of motion. We have that F is equal to MA. So when a body is performing circular motion, we also have that force. And that force is what we call the centripetal force because it is towards, it always tilts towards the center of the circle. So we can say that centripetal force is equal to M centripetal acceleration. So, we can say that F is equal to M V square all over R. Since we say that A, C is equal to V square all over R. So, we can write this this way. And we can equally say that F C is equal to M omega square r all over yes m omega square r because we also said that ac is equal to omega square r so we can write this depending on what is given whether the tangential velocity is given or the angular velocity is given so in this case we have the mass is given. The mass is given as 70 kg and making eight revolutions per second. Eight revolutions per second. So we know that omega is equal to eight revolution per second which you can write as 2 pi times I can write that as 2 pi times 8 you know pi in terms of degree is 180 so when we're talking about 2 pi we're talking about a circle so in this case by the time we substitute these values, we know the value of pi as 3.142 or 22 over 7. We can write this as 2 times 3.142 times 8. Because we know that pi is a constant. So by the time you evaluate that, we have 50.265. 50.265. Fifty point two six five radians seconds. So, but that is not what we are looking for. We are looking for the force, which is F equal to m v. So, we know what is this m. We know what is r, but we don't know what is v. So we know that v is equal to omega. R. Already we have calculated omega as 50. Our radius is given as 14. So we have 50.265 times 14. And that gives us 
703. I give out 703.71. So we can now calculate. We can now calculate our force. Therefore, force is equal to that is the centripetal force, mv square all over r. We have all the parameters now. So we can now substitute. I will say that Fc is equal to the mass is 70. Already we have calculated this value 703.71 squared divided by 14. So by the time we evaluate that, we have 2.76, 2.476 times 10 raised to the power 6.